Over many decades, in the name of progress, human activity has altered the flow and condition of our nation's waters in ways that are unnatural and sometimes very destructive. In Louisiana, for example, more than 20,000 miles of channels and canals have been cut straight through the vulnerable coastal wetlands to create shipping routes and to lay oil and gas pipelines. These man-made modifications have disrupted delicate ecologies by allowing the more saline water from the Gulf of Mexico to flow into the rich, fresher marshes. Called saltwater intrusion, this effect has caused the loss of hundreds of thousands of marshland acres. Salinities in coastal Louisiana is by far one of the most uh, prevalent causes of wetland loss. These higher salinities encroach in freshwater areas or fresher areas and once salinity reaches an area that the vegetation cannot tolerate that salinity, uh, vegetation dies and we end up losing uh, our, our coastal wetlands. Maintaining the healthy freshwater marshes is particularly important because these habitats support a more diverse plant population than saltwater marshes do. French marsh you, is the most diverse marsh as, as far as uh, grasses, sedges, other vegetation, and it includes uh, a lot more species and uh, quantities of submerged aquatic vegetation, which is very important food for waterfowl uh, and other wildlife. The roots of these diverse freshwater plants are also important because they help protect and hold on to the sediment that forms the marsh. They also produce organic or plant sediment. The factors that create an organic uh, soil are basically the breakdown materials from dying plants that builds up along the, the marsh floor, similar to uh, leaves and branches and things in a forest floor. When the dead plant material decomposes and that organic material works in with the mineral material in the soil, the soil can actually increase. But when salt water is introduced unnaturally, such as through canals and channels, the freshwater plants die quickly well before salt water plants can take root in the sediment. As a result, the sediment deteriorates and simply falls away, becoming open water in a process called coastal erosion. It's a, it's a highly organic situation where uh, that root mass uh, dissolves and the root mass is what holds the uh, fragile uh, marsh together. And once you lose that root mass, there's nothing to hold that marsh and eventually uh, into being open water. Since the 1950s, more marsh has been lost in Louisiana than anywhere else in the nation. With it have gone fresh grasses and rushes and bull tongue and irises, as well as habitat and nurseries for alligators and muskrats, ducks and herons, and sunfish and largemouth bass. But there is some good news. We now can successfully combat this problem with a restoration technique called hydrologic restoration. Hydrologic restoration uses a number of specific procedures, often in combination, to return water to its natural flow and salinity. Hydrologic modification is used statewide in coastal Louisiana because in almost every case, we are fighting the same battle. We are trying to preserve and perpetuate the freshwater regimes of our various basins across South Louisiana. It involves the installation of various types of water control structures to bring back the historic um, hydrology within a coastal wetland environment. But in a controlled uh, fashion, so that uh, the marshes are not stressed and the marshes grow at their optimum salinity, uh, and water levels. Some of the techniques are well known, such as pumps and water control devices. Others are less familiar. Such as culverts with gates, uh, bulkheads, embankments. Or you can have complicated adjustable water control structures, such as the one behind me. This is like the top of the line uh, water control structure, going all the way to the simplest structures being a plug or a, a fixed crest weir just various types of water control structures that are used to control water levels and control salinities uh, within a regime. 
This is one of the more common type water control structures that's being utilized in coastal Louisiana. It's uh, referred to as a omnidirectional flow structure where flow is only allowed in one direction to provide a, a head against any uh, higher salinities from encroaching further into an estuary. This particular structure has been fitted with a boat bay allowing boaters to continue using the resources that they've used in the past. One of the most effective methods used is the construction of large structures that can move quantities of water while carefully controlling the amount of water released and the flow rate. This is accomplished with a series of gates that can be raised or lowered as needed. Water is introduced into marshland at rates that can reduce salinity, improve flow, and stabilize the level returning the marsh water to its natural condition. Under the Coastal Wetlands Planning, Protection and Restoration Act, called QIPRA, numerous projects of this type have been completed or are now underway on federal, state, and private lands. The Sabine National Wildlife Refuge is one of four refuges in the Southwest Louisiana National Wildlife Refuge Complex, which provides winter habitat for migratory waterfowl, including a variety of ducks, geese, herons, and egrets. There, a channel dredged for shipping allowed salt water to intrude, which in turn led to a significant loss of precious, protective marshland. In response, Quipra organized a project to replace three aging water control structures with updated technologies. The Sabine Structures Replacement Project will reduce salt water intrusion and help maintain more than 1,000 acres of marsh. This is the Hog Island Gully water control structure. It consists of four large seven and a half foot wide bays and two three and a half foot uh, wide bays in the center. There are two gates on each uh, slot and there's a bottom leaf and a top leaf and we can raise either one or both. The gates in those slots, they're operated by electric motors. We can control salinity, we can control water depth, and it'll allow the shrimp, crabs, and fish in and out of the marsh. We want to protect these marshes from further degradation from saltwater intrusion. If the water levels are too high, structures drain excess water, and they slow down uh, higher salinity water from getting into the marshes. Another effective technology, called a freshwater diversion, redirects fresh water from a river into wetland areas. This can be done by cutting a crevasse or gap in a riverbank or levee, or by siphoning river water over a levee through a pipe that functions like a straw. And the technologies are continually improving. Restoration projects on public lands are important because they protect marshes so that they can be used by all of the public. You see around here there are people fishing. We have boat launches here. We have duck hunting uh, on the refuge. We have two nature trails and these structures are helping protect these public lands. Whether just one technology is used or several in combination, Current hydrologic restoration techniques offer a myriad of strategies to restore altered water to its original level, flow, and salinity. Nationwide, and particularly in Louisiana, hydrologic restoration projects range from large structures such as this one to smaller techniques such as installing a weir in a bayou or installing a culvert. And one of the most positive qualities of hydrologic restoration is that it is a proactive technology. Not only can existing problems be addressed, but if at-risk marshland can be identified, we can intervene effectively before the damage is done. With ongoing advances in hydrologic restoration, our waters will continue to return to their natural condition and flow, nourishing, protecting, and preserving the waters of our magnificent marshlands and all that they hold. To learn more about Quipra, visit www.lacoast.gov.